have you ever wondered how this buzzword infestation actually works? And do you want the insights from a multi-million dollars company run by a manifestation master? Then stay tuned in this episode because we are going to dive into this way deeper than you can imagine. And welcome to The Money Mindset Show, the place where we help female entrepreneurs to transform their mind so that they can achieve financial success in the least amount of time. Here, we talk about subconscious mind, we talk about money mindset chips, money mindset blocks, a strategy so that you can bypass your own money mindset and increase your income, better your relationship with money, and grow your business. Okay, but before I let you in into today's episode, come here. Be honest with me. How many times have you found yourself doing the extra thing, going the extra mile because you really, really want this goal, but the financial results are nowhere to be seen? You know you want your financial independence, but yet you find yourself spending more time and effort and money into crafting the perfect social media strategy, thinking what caption should I write, what picture should I post, when should I post it, instead of looking at the things that really matter with money. The exact same loop that I have seen hundreds of my clients throughout the years getting a start. And the reason is one and one only. The type of habits that are driving your life, these habits are the leader of your show, of your business, and we have to stop them. The way that you do that is by adapting new ones. I have put together for you the top five financial habits for exponential growth with your business. For you to download right now, go to the Money Mindset Hub dot com slash five. That is the money mindset hub h u b dot com slash five and download this top five financial habits for exponential growth specifically for founders. Again, that is the money mindset hub h u b dot com slash Hello, Catherine. Thank you for being here. It's such a pleasure to do this episode with you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh my God, it is so my pleasure. And it's so good to see you again after hanging yeah. out in Costa Rica. Yes, it has been so long, right? When was you it? Became a, you became a whole mom <laughs> since then. <laughs> So a lot has happened. A lot which is has so happened. exciting. Yes, it feels like years, but she's only two months. So it's been like just a little of time, but it feels like every single day is like a freaking year of my life. Those first two, I will tell you, the first two years are an absolute vortex. And yeah. it probably took me until he was 18 months to finally come to grips with like what my life is. You know, there's it's wow. such an adjustment. It's such a transition. It's such a an evolution. And every single day you're like, WTF? Do I have yeah. a handle on things? Do I not? What's going on? Can I do this? Can I not do this? I swear to you, like patience is the name of the game in motherhood. Just like acceptance and patience and forgiveness and grace are such key components. And there's like something that happened, especially happened for me. I can only, of course, speak for myself, but there's like a switch yeah. that I think went off when he was about 18 months mm -hmm. where I was like, okay, I feel like I've come to grips with the fact that I have a whole other human in my family and I'm responsible for keeping him alive. And this is actually kind of fun and I'm enjoying it. And he's so cute. And we're interacting and then you you just get into like a flow. Yes. You know? Yeah. I I am really, really looking forward to that 18 months mark <laughs> now <laughs> because it's just like every it's so cute, but my day goes by so fast without doing anything that I wanted to get done. That frustrates the heck out of me. Like yeah. that is the acceptance, right? It's just like, yeah. okay, whatever. But like today I had so many plans. You don't even know for this interview. And then it was like, it's time for the interview. LA, I feel you. I so feel you. And I think that managing expectations is a massive part of motherhood because 
you know, as an entrepreneur myself and a mother, um, I, I just like, I don't know. I, I kind of, what gave me peace is like splitting my life into these periods, like essentially into decades. Like I spent my twenties building my business and it was my soul baby, my soul responsibility. And then I know that I, I, there's still so much more that I want to give to the world and I want to accomplish and I want to pursue. But at the same time, I also want to have kids. And I know that the first like five to 10 years of their life, like you're the most active in their life before they're like, yeah. screw you, mom. I want to hang out with my <laughs> friends. Right. And you're, you're like, you obviously matter and you play a large role. I get that. But it's like time wise and, you know, like making sure that they're fed and, and diapering them and t- toilet training them and all those things kind of fall away. And so you have a lot more time and especially the mental and emotional capacity that it yeah. takes to show up in your business. A lot of that, I would say like 90% <laughs> of that for me is is with Orion right now. But I just came to peace with like, you know what, my 30s, it's okay for it to be slower in business. Yeah, And I have found that to also manifest. And at first I was afraid of it because I have noticed like more dips in my numbers um, since I became a mom. And at first I was like, oh, this big fear of mine that the, you know, once I become a mom, I can't do it all and I can't have both and my business is going to die. Like, no, that's not freaking true. It's right. just that where you place your priorities, that's where the energy is going to grow. And so for me, like motherhood is a massive priority for me. And I'm just going to focus my attention in my 30s on that. And then once I get in my 40s, like, fuck, it is go time. We are Breaking soaring. On. We are going. And and I'm at peace with that. You know what? I'm yeah. at peace with that. I don't have to be everything to everyone all at once every single year of my life. Like there can be years of oscillation. Yeah and wavelengths and growths and plateaus. And it's all so beautiful and part of the journey. I love it. I love it because this dives right into my first question. Catherine, what's your money story that everybody seems like, or maybe people that sees you now, she's like, well, she has everything figured out. She has the perfect money story. I want that money story. Walk us through that money story for you. How, how, was before how it has been and how it's still changing yes gosh i am far from perfect for for <laughs> anyone who thinks that i have everything figured out i think that's the biggest misconception is that once we achieve something that every single internal wound of ours is going to get fixed but the mm-hmm. thing is is that nothing in the external world is ever going to fix anything on the internal world that is all an internal game Um, But the beauty of it is that as you grow internally and as you heal internally, of course, the external world then matches that so beautifully. Uh, My money story is that I grew up uh, very, very poor. My family came to the United States when I was, how old was I? 13 months old, which as a mom now, when Orion yeah. was 13 months, I was just thinking to myself, like, imagine Catherine right now, you had wow. to like run away from the mafia that is threatening to kill your family every single day, not knowing if you're going to make it to the airport without getting murdered, which was a real possibility. Um, my family was being followed. They were getting death threats and they heard like they heard so many stories of people escaping the fall of the Soviet Union and never making it to the airport because they got killed on the way there because they were followed. Um, And people were hungry for resources, hungry for money, hungry, grasping onto any bit of certainty that would, um, you know, take away the pain and the shock of like, what is going on? The whole country's falling apart. All the systems are falling apart. There's no government. There's no police. Like, What is happening? What is happening? Yeah. What is happening? And so anyway, my family gathered, um, I think it was $900 US um, at the time to start a whole new life in the United States. Thankfully, by the pure grace of God, somehow, uh, my mom tells this insane story where um, I'm not, I don't recall all the details of it, but basically something happened where the person who is essentially granting the green cards yeah, happened to write down my name and my father's name on the green card, along with my whole mom's family, because my mom's family, her stepdad was the one who kind of had a ticket to the United States. 
And he yeah. just so happened to include the whole family. So that just gave this like big green light, a big escape to the United States. Yeah. And so one day, one dark day, at three in the morning, we had this whole journey where we essentially um, first we went to our summer house in the fields mm -hmm. of Russia and lived there for two weeks so that nobody could really follow us. And right. then we spent three weeks at a family friend's house and spent like time there. And then we made it to Moscow and spent some time there hiding somewhere else. And then we finally got to the airport wow. and people would get stripped away all of their money, all of their belongings would just get stripped away at the airport, too. So that was a whole other risk where um, my family actually put cash, the cash money that we had went in my diaper. So I literally wow. smuggled money across the border, essentially, because in order wow. for, the, for the money to not get found so that God forbid someone takes yeah. it, they just can because everyone kind of had the power. People could do yeah. whatever the fuck they wanted. And so my mom tells a story of how she literally put the cash bundle of cash, huge bundle of cash into my diaper. And then we went through like the, you know, the metal detector and got through and then got on the plane and then um, immigrated. And so anyway, life was an interesting uh, start for me entering my family. And we moved to the United States. Um, my family, like my mom immediately went into... Um, getting a degree in nursing, actually. I don't know how she did it, but without speaking a word of English, she walked herself to a community college and just knew like, uh, cause we had other family here that already spent like maybe 10, 15 years in the United States and thank God for them. Cause they kind of could tell my mom like, okay, you're going to need to look for the registration office. So this word mm. registration, go wow. walk there. And so my mom, not knowing a word of English, somehow enrolled herself into a hmm. community college, took herself through nursing school. My dad worked two jobs as a dishwasher. And um, thankfully, they got granted welfare. So they had some resources there, <clears throat> food stamps and things like that. And so my first, um, I would say until I was seven or eight, when my mom finally like graduated and was able to get a job and divorce my dad, who was actually ended up being very abusive, physically, emotionally, sexually, all the things. Um, they were very, uh, you know, humble times. And uh, growing up, I heard a lot of phrases like, we can't afford that. We're poor. Mm -hmm. We're not like the other rich kids. You know, when I went to school and started mingling, um, cause I didn't, we didn't live in a bad area. We actually lived at the time in a fairly wealthy area because of, uh, circumstances where a big earthquake essentially destroyed our apartment in 1994, the 1994 earthquake in Los Angeles. And, um, I believe it was like the Red Cross or some other organization like granted us an apartment, um, through the government. So a one bedroom apartment. And we didn't have any furniture. So we like dragged it off the streets and stuff. So we were able to have like a very humble one bedroom apartment, but in a nice area. Um, and so yeah. I went to a school with like, you know, kids that had more resources than I did. And so I always felt like an outsider growing up. I always never felt like I belonged. It's a very sensitive child and watching my child go to uh, mm. a Montessori toddler program in the last two days, I can tell he's just like me, very sensitive child. And like all of my old unhealed wounds from school uh, are just rising yes. up to the surface, you know, so it's a beautiful yeah, healing yeah. for me as well. Um, and yeah, I never felt like I belonged. I was severely bullied growing up. Um, I felt like kids never liked me. I had a friend growing up who um, her dad actually he was a doctor. He was a plastic surgeon, but he could never pass the the um, the exams in the United States. So he ended up mm -hmm. going back to Europe and practicing where he does have his license. And as soon as he did that, tons of wealth came into the family. So my best friend would have constant deposits of like thousands of dollars into her bank account on a monthly basis. And she can buy whatever she wants and do whatever she wants. And I just was so sick and tired of feeling like the poor kid. And I yeah. remember making a decision at a young age. I don't, I think it's just from survival. Like something in me just said, when I grow up, I'm going to be so fucking rich that nothing's going to matter. Nobody's going to say no to me. I'm never going to hear the words. I can't afford this. I'm done watching my mom cry over bills and trying to figure out, is she going to pay for this or is she going to pay for this this month? I was just like tired of it. And something within me on a soul level just knew that this didn't yeah. have to be my forever. This wasn't forever. This was temporary. I don't know what 
I think it's because I'm an old soul. I don't know. Maybe it's like a remembering of like how lifetimes work and like, and like the <laughs> fact that, you know, we, we can transform things. Things aren't permanent. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, with my mom's background in, um, you know, putting herself through education and seeing what freedoms that offer to her, she of course instilled that into me where she's like, Catherine, you're going to go to medical school. Um, you're going to become yeah. a doctor. You're going to become very successful so that you never have to worry about a thing in life. And so that was the essentially life education that I got, which is like, you have to go to traditional school and get a traditional degree and get good grades yes. and things like that. And oh my God, I was constantly punished and grounded for not having straight A's. Um, it was like a never ending, like dread in my life that I felt when the report card would come into the mailbox, I would do everything in my being to try to delay it, to try to lose it, yeah. to try to hide it. And of course we had one of those mailboxes that was like very complicated. It wasn't just one of those that you could just like open. It was one of those that you needed a key to, um, at our house. And so of course I never had the key. I could never pull it off. Sometimes I would, I would get very creative. And so anyway... <laughs> Um, when I finally got into college and I realized that all of these science classes that I was taking, though very, very interesting, objective, objectively speaking, wasn't really for me. I mean, if I mm -hmm. had to learn, if I had to spend one more day learning about the development of these frogs um, and, <laughs> and how, you know, the, the, all the life stages of the tadpole and all of these things that I was learning in biology that, first of all, had nothing to do with medical school, but, you know, obviously align with medical school because you have to take them as prereqs and all these physics labs and chem labs yeah. that I'm doing. And I'm just like, oh my God, not another day. But I didn't think that I had any other option. And for me, my idea of success was very, very much rooted in this like traditional sense of like, um, you have to you have to go to medical school. That's your only option. Look at how it changed mm -hmm. my mom's life to go into this very certain path. Right. And so it's going to do the same thing for you. Well, thankfully, I um, well, I kind of skipped a part, which is like the big part of like how I got into manifestation, which is I discovered the book, The Secret, when I was the 16 secret. years yeah. old. Yeah, my friend handed me this book and she said, Hey, Catherine, this is how my grandpa has everything that he wants in life and he doesn't work for money. Money works for him. And I thought to myself, I'm going to read this book. I want to know the secret. And that was very transforming for me and just understanding how my life manifested up until that point and all of the paradigms and belief systems and things that were passed down to me and just how I was continuing to manifest those patterns in my life of just like, sheer victimhood in that like nobody mm -hmm. likes me nobody loves me you know my parents are very hard on me and so it's like i was never good enough and i just kept creating this reality of the same and when i read that book i was like oh my god this is so in alignment with this thought that i had as a child where i wasn't stuck in my circumstances like i said like i had this thought in my childhood like no 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 you can change your future and so that just like really reiterated that for me. And then I came across um, my very first online business opportunity when I was in college. And thank God for timing. I think that things just aligned so beautifully in my life where before I did something that I would truly regret, like going to medical school, I would be yeah. offered this like opportunity to get on the path that I'm really meant to be on. I was scrolling on Instagram one night and I came across this. I was following this doctor who was very much into fitness at the time. And she was running this like online business and making money on the side that was helping her pay off her loans for medical school. And I was like, genius, because I'm still stuck going to medical school, but I don't want medical school loans. They're like $300,000. I'm going to use this online business and the power of manifestation to create a successful business so I don't have to pay so much in student loans. I thought it was the most genius what? plan ever. Yeah. So I went down this path starting a beach body business, which is in multi level yeah. marketing. And I loved it. I loved it. The idea of online marketing was the most incredible, fascinating concept I could have ever discovered. I mean, it was so amazing. And I remember sitting in my biology classes, these like big halls, because I ended up transferring to this huge university, the University of Washington. And we have these enormous classrooms with like 400 students per class. Oh my God. 
And I was just typing away on my laptop and the professor is blah, 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 <laughs> biology. And I'm on my computer on Facebook selling these shakes and these workout programs and people are actually buying them. And I'm like uh, amazed and fascinated. And then I ended up making more than I made at the time at the movie theater. That was my first job. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I quit my movie theater job so I can spend more time selling shakes and workout programs on the internet so that I can continue growing this and taking it seriously so I can eventually go to medical school. Right. Well, my mentor in this business one day, she was like, first of all, Catherine, I am a doctor. I don't think you're meant to become a doctor. You're so <laughs> much more than a doctor. Not saying like, you know, there's a hierarchy here, but I'm just saying like, yeah. your purpose doesn't lie in medicine. And I can tell because I'm around doctors and I'm a freaking doctor myself. You're not meant to right. become a doctor. And um, there's this guy I think you should go see. I just came back from this incredible event. This guy's, this guy's name is Tony Robbins. He's going to blow your mind. He's so like, he's just so your vibe. I can just feel like you guys are just like, I don't know, soul siblings on some level. And I'm like, okay. So of course, I listened to everything that she told me to do because I really wanted to be successful. I really wanted right. to make something of myself and be successful and not have to worry about anything and not continue to live this old story of constantly hearing no. When I wanted to do something, the answer was no. Why? Because we couldn't afford it. That was mm -hmm. always the path in my childhood. And so I went to this event. And at this event, I had so many epiphanies and so many breakthroughs specifically with this one question that I kept hearing pop up for me over and over and over again, which is, Catherine, who are you living for? And at first, I'm like, that's an interesting question. Ha ha ha. I like wrote it down. But with each day that the event passed, it was like, no, Catherine, who the F are you living for? And all of a sudden, I wrote down everyone but myself. And I realized mm -hmm. I'm still pursuing my mom's dream of going to medical school. It is not my dream. I'm living in Washington state. I really did not enjoy my time living in Washington state. So like, why am I still living here? Because of this relationship that I'm in. I was with my boyfriend right. from senior year of high school all the way up until a year past graduating from college. And I realized like, I'm not really like, it's a very comforting relationship in that it provides me security in that um, he went off into working um, in the construction business and he was bringing in a lot of money immediately post-college. And so, of course, I right. liked that because the right. date nights got excited after we graduated from college. And he actually ended up buying me a ticket to the Tony Robbins event um, for my birthday, right? Because it was like $600. <laughs> I didn't have $600. And so... Anyway, I realized like I have to be honest with myself. I'm not in this relationship right. because it makes me happy. It's not my dream relationship. And it was quite toxic, to be honest. And mm -hmm. so um, I decided that weekend to end this relationship, to not go to medical school and to move back to Los Angeles, which is where I grew up, which is where my family originally immigrated to. And the only reason we moved to Washington was for my stepdad's job in, in high school. And there was another peak moment for me at this event, which has a lot to do with my money story, which is I told you how growing up, like I always felt like the poor kid amongst my yeah. peers um, because I went to schools. My mom did everything in her power to take me to schools with um, people who had more resources and, and really good schools and safe neighborhoods. And so obviously that came with people with a higher economic status. And, um, and so... I always felt like the outsider. And I remember the last time I let myself feel like an outsider, it was at this event where um, Tony Robbins was selling his like next level. And my life was already transformed. I was like, I have to keep going. And in the network marketing space, in the personal development space there, I mean, in the network marketing space, they're always encouraging people to do personal development. They say your right. mindset is connected to the level of success. Your belief systems have everything to do with success and blah, 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 blah. So you guys have to do personal development. So I was bought into the personal development space, uh, you know, since I was 16 years old, because I've yeah. witnessed such magic and peace that it brought to me and just like an understanding of how life and reality is created. And so um, he was advertising, he was pitching the, I forget what it's called, mastery, whatever mastery. Um, it's like these two events, life and wealth mastery. 
a master okay. university is what it's called. So these two events, one is like mastering your wealth and one is mastering your life, like in terms of health. And I'm like, I got to go. I got to do everything <laughs> in my power to stay in this man's energy because my life is transformed. This is amazing. I'm scared shitless. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm about to go break up with my boyfriend and like, and like, move back to LA and not go to medical school. So what am I going to do? Am I going to pursue beach body full time? Like, oh my God, what am I doing? I felt totally crazy. And I went to go see the price tag of Master yeah. University and it was $10,000. Well, your girl had a credit card that was maxed out at $1,000 at the time. And I maybe had like a couple hundred bucks in my bank account. And I was like, I don't know how to make that happen. And so um, I was like, you know what? It's for next time. It's okay. It's for next time because I was very, very well versed in like manifestation mindset language at the time. Yeah. And I was like, it's not, I stopped saying the words, I can't afford this. I just said, it's not right now. It's for next time. And so I created this like window of opportunity, but something within me. So my friend who I befriended at this event, she just stands up and goes and signs up. And then she goes to the front of the room where you have an opportunity to meet Tony Robbins and like take a picture with him. And yeah. I remember watching her do this. And all of a sudden, it was like all my childhood just rose up to the surface where all my friends can do everything, but I can't. Why? Yeah. Because of yeah. money. And I just had this like feeling bubble up so big within me. And I just remember being, nope, never the fuck again. But at first yeah. I cried. Okay. At first I cried. I felt like a victim. Poor me, poor me, poor me. I went home because this is the second to last night of the event. So we still had another day. I went home to my grandma's couch. That's where I was sleeping at the time. Um, uh, temporarily before I actually moved in with her to <laughs> run manifestation babe off of my grandma's couch. And, um, I just, I had this like fuck it moment within my body. It was just like, I'm yeah. going to figure it out. I'm going to sign up. I'm going to make it work. I don't even know if I can sign up, if I can't pay the full price. I know they have a payment plan. Wait, do they have a payment plan? Let me go talk to them tomorrow. So the next day I just walked in and I was like, today is the last day I'm hearing no because of finances. That's it. I'm transforming my life. I am done. I am, I'm just done. So I walked yeah. up to the the back uh, where they have the stand, the the booth, and I was like, I was like, what what what's the deal here? How can I sign up for this? And they're like, well, you can put a thousand dollars down, and then we can break up the rest on this on payments. So I had my one credit card with a thousand dollar limit. I literally like shakingly handed it over them to them, and they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know, but I need to sign up. And so uh, I went through all this paperwork, you know, to sign for this loan and whatnot, yeah. the terms and conditions. And then there we have it. I'm inside of Mastery University and I'm signed up and I'm out 10 grand, which with the loan and interest basically ended up being 15 grand. Um, and I'm still, I still have to go home and break up with my boyfriend and, you know, tell my mom <laughs> I'm not going to medical school. I'm like, oh, I felt insane, Alejandra. I felt insane. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> I mean, that was a very defining moment. And so oh. from that point on, um, a lot of a lot of cool things uh, manifested where I met my now husband um, that I'm married to and have a child with a week after this event, after breaking up with my boyfriend. <laughs> I ended up moving to Los Angeles and it was a rough start at first. Um, I ended up living on my grandma's couch. But in the months between making that decision and moving on my grandma's couch, I realized what my what I actually wanted to create a business out of, what I actually wanted to do. And I realized it was manifestation. manifestation it was yeah. personal development. It was just inspiring people to choose themselves, to really understand that they're not at the effect of their life. They are the cause of their own life. And that was just something that I felt so deep within me. Like I am here to really empower people and inspire people and motivate people to choose themselves and create the lives that they want to create. Um, and so that's where Manifestation Babe was born. And from, you know, the start of Manifestation Babe and just like serving people and just like giving out um, information, all the information that I had on manifestation on social media, I started a Facebook group. I did these like live streams. I just like was like giving and giving and giving and giving. And from yeah. that, people um, were asking me like, hey, Catherine, like, do you do one on one coaching? Do you have a course on this? Do you do this? Do you do that? And at the same time, I also 
had this defining moment where I was like, this is the year that I'm going to master manifestation around money and around business. And so I'm going to bring everything that I know about these manifestation principles where I'm not just going to teach them. I'm not just going to keep them in my head on a cerebral level. I'm actually going to embody them. So it was like this big, massive experiment of like, what if I actually went all in on manifestation and then shared what I was doing with people throughout the process and throughout the journey. And that ended up becoming my multi, multi seven figure company that I run today, which is Manifestation Babe, where I'm still doing the same thing. I'm just learning <laughs> shit and teaching things and, and sharing <laughs> and just have a larger audience. And, and that's basically yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I, I love, I love first, there's a lot I wanted to ask, but First, I love how you were in the business to teach, to choose yourself first, because you were choosing yourself. So it's kind of like you had to do that big first scary step so that you, other people can do it through your audience. And I'm just thinking about I'm a huge manifestation babe fan. And I remember the exact moment when I found you. I don't know how, Catherine. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know what my cell phone had. I, it, I was not. Uh, into podcast and I was not I didn't even have an iPhone by the time or or did I I don't remember but I anyways it just dropping my phone a podcast episode one of the first ones that you were doing in your Facebook but then you put it in in your podcast yes and I was listening to the podcast and I was walking down the streets in New Zealand I was feeling so defeated because Um, unlike you, I didn't feel the poor girl. I was the rich girl in the poor community. So everybody Mm. was like, um, uh, all the things about the rich girl, right? And I was living in New Zealand and I was walking on these big mansions and we were staying in a house with a pool, with a farm. It was like amazing, but always like the outsider. And I remember walking down that hill with the dogs and I heard you and I was like, this is going to be my life. Like, this is how I'm going to change. I am going to, something came through that, that voice, which was very not like not related to anything that I was doing, <laughs> but yeah. it was something that came through that episode. And then since ever we follow, we follow and how I entered to uh, MBA was because I was in such a, of course, I manifested all these things that I was living back in 2020. And I was in such a rock bottom. I, I was angry with the universe. I literally remember um, having a fight with the universe. I like believe in you so much um, because like I told you, uh, I don't remember if I told you or not, but uh, when I was six years old, I had a, a health condition, right? And I had, my mom taught me how to dream and how to believe in the universe and ask for it and all these things. So we had a close relationship with the universe. And in 2020, I was angry. I was like, you don't listen to me. You're a piece of shit and whatever. So when I saw your MBA, I was like, hey, I may have the money for this. Um, Hey to the universe, right? I may have the money for this, but I want to know that you are listening to me, that you are on my side. So if I get to MBA, it will be because of the scholarship. It will be because I want to feel that you are listening to me. Mm -hmm. And I apply on the last day and I got the scholarship and then all these beautiful things has happened, peer mentor and all these things. But to the point of you saying, choose yourself, I really had to think, what am I doing in, in 2020 with my life for me? Cause I wasn't living for me uh, any longer. I was living for everybody and the neighbor, but me. So it was just like such a beautiful thing to listen you saying that because at the end of the day, all in whoever is in this community is because they want to choose themselves. And somehow in the equation, we have gotten lost on it. Yes. But yeah, I want to jump into energetics because everybody talks about mindset, but I have not heard people master the narratives or the way of communicating about energy. Why is it important to master the energy of money from the perspective that you are mastering it? Yeah. Okay. So here's how I, at a very early age, 
back when I was 16 years old, understood energetics and why it became so important. So like I said, you know, I went through all these science classes and it's so funny looking in retrospect how so many elements that I picked up along my science career. It's like I use, I now finally use today, <laughs> um, even though I didn't become a doctor, I do know right. how to look up research articles and how to like sift for information and things like that. Love and it. then quantum physics, for whatever reason, I didn't connect to manifestation at the time because we were just doing these like weird equations with magnetics, like magnetism. But I kept getting a hundred percent on all of these quantum physics tests. And now I'm looking back and I'm like, huh, there was something about this. Like interesting, Catherine. And I was always the most interested in neuroscience. Huh? That's interesting, right? So I always remember, like even in my science classes, they would always say how even things that are completely solid are still vibrating at a certain frequency. Like everything is in vibration. So like water molecules, when they're in the form of steam, they are vibrating at a very high frequency, a very high rate. Frequency just means rate, right? They're vibrating at a really high rate. And when water is in liquid form, it's just a little bit slower. And when water is frozen in solid form, it's just even even slower, but it's still always moving and still always vibrating. And then I was taught, so that's that was very interesting for me to like kind of catch on to that. I'm like, huh, everything is in vibration. Everything is always moving. Well, then I remember my teachers talking about atoms and how everything is made of atoms and how at, you know, every atom is made of subatomic particles and how physics change when it comes to quantum physics, when it comes to those subatomic particles, Newtonian physics doesn't really add up when it comes to quantum physics. Right. Things act differently on the quantum level. Like the, the duality of, of matter or particles is that Things are only solid. Things are only particles when there's an observer. And when there is no observer, meaning no consciousness, then everything is in wavelength form, which means just pure possibility. And they've proven this in a, an experiment called the double slit experiment. So that was like, huh, that's very interesting and very in alignment with manifestation where we always talk about having an intention. Having an intention is just placing your observation on a possibility that you really want manifested into form. And you can literally take at something that's an energetic form, which is like a light form, which is a wave form, and turn it into matter simply through your intention. That's really interesting. Okay. And then they say like atoms are composed of 99.9999% space. So the distance between the the center of an atom, which is called the nucleus, which is where the proton and the neutron are, and the electron orbiting on the outside, which when I went to my science classes back then, they thought that it was literally a an electron that's orbiting mm -hmm. around the, the center, but actually you don't actually see it. It's actually something that it exists in possibility. So it exists at all in all places at once. It's kind of like this cloud. So very much aligns with the double slit experiment. But what I thought was the most interesting is that they said that the distance between the nucleus and the electron is almost like as if you put a peanut in the center of a baseball field, which I don't know how many of your listeners um, are familiar with baseball. I know it's very American. I don't think it's yeah. played in many places <laughs> outside of America, but it's like a football field, which is like American football. Again, another American sport, <laughs> baseball field, whatever. And like the electron yes. is like in the parking lot. So all of that is pure space. space. Well, nothing is wasted in nature. Nothing is wasted in the universe. Nothing is actually just empty space. It actually is very much comprised of energy. So mm -hmm. that made me go, huh, everything is energy. That's really interesting. And so if everything is energy, that means that everything in my room right now is actually energy, even though I'm perceiving it as solid form. Mm -hmm. That's just how my brain is processing energy in such a way that I'm experiencing reality. Because if we didn't have a brain, there wouldn't be reality. Like there would be, it would just be a very exactly. confusing, confusing place. We would just see all of we would just see energy forms and light waves and things like that, but not, nothing actually, nothing would actually have tangibility. And so I'm like, huh, that's interesting. So then I'm probably made up of all energy and everything in this universe is energy. And so that means that money 
is also energy. It's energy. Interesting. Okay. So that made me then be able to apply more of these manifestation teachings. So I started th- thinking about manifestation teachings and how they say that everything you put out into the universe is what you attract to yourself. So there's these universal laws, these principles of like, for example, we often hear about the law of attraction. So like attracts like, right? And so whatever I put out into the world, whatever my frequency is, is what I get in return. Well, what is my frequency? Because then I sat down and I'm like, hold on, how do I know what my frequency is? What does that mean? And I realized that it all has to do with our thoughts, our beliefs, and emotions. Mm-hmm. Now, we the thing about thoughts is a lot of people get very honed in on just their thoughts. Like, just control your thoughts and just think positive. Yeah. But the problem with that is that we have 60,000 thoughts a day. And uh, 95% of them are completely unconscious. <laughs> Exactly. So we don't not, we're not even actually aware of 95% of them. So how can I possibly control every single thought that I have if I'm not even aware of 95% of them? And so that made me think, hold on, let me let me go into something that's a little more tangible in that I have more control over. And so then I realized that it's really beliefs. My beliefs mm-hmm. are determining what my thoughts are and what my, my emotions are. And if I want to shift that, then I just need to shift the belief. Okay, but before I let you go, do you know that you have a space where your money mindset work is made extra simple so that you can increase your income, better your relationship with money and grow your business in such a simple and easy way? Go to themoneymindsethub.com and choose your path and start making those changes easily and effortlessly. That is themoneymindsethub.com.